Okay, and just like that, it was one minute past. So <laughs> I'm going to call to order our um, West Lafayette Community School Corporation regular meeting of the Board of School Trustees for this evening, Monday, May the 8th at 6.31 p.m. Um, <clears throat> we have moved, thank you, to the West Side uh, Boiler Invasion for being willing to come to our meeting this evening to be celebrated. And we'd love to hear about your program. We've put you at the very tippy top of the agenda. So thank you to my fellow board members who are willing to forego our normal order of business so you can be recognized. So without further ado, Mr. Schreiner. Sure, well, good evening. Thanks for having everybody tonight. And at least they don't have to travel far. <laughs> they're already, uh, Mr. Woodard said they're already planning for next year. So obviously there's a big group. Uh, I know there are more involved, but uh, I want to introduce Mr. Chris Woodard, who uh, after many years, as you might remember some of you, with Mr. Florence, who was the originator and the genesis of robotics, not only at Westside, but also in Indiana. And he's still very actively involved. But for many years, we went without someone who could competently coach, um, help lead robotics. And we're excited when Mr. Woodard joined us a second year from um, Southern Indiana, from Jasper, where he had a similar robotics program. So we're really excited as he's getting up to speed on what Westside is all about related to robotics. And I'll ask him just to talk a little bit about season amazing group of mentors that make this happen with, with all of you guys. So, Chris, if you want to come up, please. Thank you. Please. Thank, thank you very much for having us tonight. We, we really appreciate it. And first off, we also want to tell you how much we really appreciate you giving us so much, right? The space, the all the support, the buses, everything, right, to make this happen. But I, I want to hand it over to Ann and Ashley. They do an amazing job of keeping everyone else in line. You look at them, they're like, yeah, I got that. <laughs> they're the ones who were voted to be able to talk about what this season has meant for us. So we are seeing. <laughs> okay, so as Mr. Woodard said, my name is Ian. And I'm Ashley. So overall, we've had a pretty successful season. In our team's 24-year history, this is the first time that we've actually won an event. In fact, we've won two events, we're a state finalist, and even won our division in Worlds. So what that entails, for Worlds at least, is that we had some of the top teams from around the world divided into eight smaller brackets. And so we ended up on the top of that and were able to compete with the top 24 teams in the world, and, it, and we ended up in fifth place. So. so to get to Worlds, we obviously had to do really well in the first place to get there, and one of our building blocks for getting there was our first impact event. It's the third blue banner over here, and we got it in our first event this year. And uh, the Impact Award is the most prestigious award in first robotics, and it recognizes the team that produces the most tangible impact in their community. So we were able to earn this award after many, many years of building a foundation in our community to have STEM events, our partnerships with Purdue to have the Minority in Engineering program, and also with the school to have events like our hackathons where we invite students from all across Indiana to come to our school and learn about coding, as well as many other fundraisers that we do in partnership with the school. So we're really thankful for those partnerships because that was basically the building blocks for us winning, going to state, and then eventually qualifying. this year like I got to back up a little bit first robotics isn't battle bots like what you see on TV the objective isn't to try to destroy other teams but instead compete with and against them so this year the point of the game was to be able to stack cubes which are these roundish purple things and cones which are really just small traffic cones 
coming in to place them in a tiered, almost stair -like, staircase-like pattern. So our robot this year featured a wrist that's able to move up and down, rollers that are able to suck in the game pieces, either from the bottom for cubes or from the top with four cones, we're kind of able to sandwich them. And then the, all of this is on an elevator that's able to move up and down, and it's at an angle so that we're able to extend out of the robot to be able to play safe games. All of this is also moved by a, something called a swerve drive. So if you've ever, office chairs, they kind of have the little swivel wheels. What a swerve module is, uh, it is it basically one of those wheels, except it's fully motorized, so it's able to rotate and move it on its own. So this, so this helped the robot be extra mobile and it eventually got us to the place where we ended up. Very much thank you for having us, for allowing us to do this, for all the support. We very much thank all of our students and all the mentors who have put hours and hours and hours as you can imagine. One of these robots can take three or 4,000 hours to assemble and design and everything. So. Well, hang on just one minute. Okay. I need to say something to you. In nine and a half years on the board, throughout those times, we've had different state champions of different sports teams come in here to our meetings when they've qualified for state. I want you to know that we hope to see a lot more of you in this room and that the work that you're doing is fantastic. The other thing is I would love if you would please start at that end and just raise your hand and give us your name because I'd really like to know who everybody is that we're looking at. Hi, I'm Eugene. I am a sophomore. Hi, I'm Kayla Wolfco. I'm a freshman. I'm Anish Tirani, and I'm a sophomore. I'm David Yang, and I'm a junior. I'm Kyle Fong, and I'm a senior. <coughs> I've already introduced my name is Ian Wolfco, and I'm a junior. <laughs> I'm Ashley, and I'm a sophomore. I'm Moses, I'm a junior. Uh, I'm Raphael Young, and I'm a sophomore. I'm Sophia Yang, and I'm a freshman. Brad Melton, team mentor. Uh, I'm a Josh Sabian, uh, student at Purdue, Michigan. Derek Robert, just graduated from our college. Kate Young, I'm a uh, mentor. I'm Hank Kulin, I'm a 461 Westside and Purdue alumni and mentor. Dan O'Brien, I'm a Brian, Taylor, I'm a Thank you. Notice some of these mentors are at Purdue, which is great that they're able to come over. But quite a few of these mentors are a little bit older than that. And, and most of them are engineers. Companies such as Caterpillar, uh, FedEx, all these different places coming to help us. And, and like I said, that makes a massive difference. So thank you. Wonderful. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Thank you very much for all you do. Congratulations. And you even have your own side exit door, which is impressive. <laughs> yeah. Oh, for goodness sake. Thank you, Mr. Schreiner, for helping us out with that tonight. All right, so we'll move on to item one, approval of the agenda for the May 8th, 2023 regular meeting of the Board of School Trustees. Can I get a motion, please? Moved move by Mr. Marley. Second by Mrs. Austin. Are there any questions or changes with regards to the agenda for tonight's meeting? Okay, hearing none, all of those in favor of approving tonight's agenda, please indicate with a show of hands. 
That motion carries seven to zero, Mrs. Julian. Moving on to item two, approval of the minutes of the April 20th, 2023 executive session of the Board of School Trustees. Can I get a motion, please? Moved by Mrs. Mumford. Second by Mr. Marley. Any questions or changes to that agenda or uh, minutes? Okay. Hearing none, all those in favor of approving the minutes of the April 20th exec session meeting, please indicate with a show of hands. That motion carries seven to zero, Mrs. Julian. Moving on to item three, approval of the minutes of the April 10th, 2023 regular board meeting of the Board of School Trustees. Can I get a motion, please? Moved by Mr. Marley, second by Mrs. Mumford. Any questions, comments with regard to those minutes? Mr. Wong. Yeah. April 10th uh, meeting minutes. And uh, basically based on uh, our Indian open door laws, I just uh, quote, I read over here, as the meeting progress, the following uh, memorandum should be kept. The general substance of all matters proposed, discussed, or decided. So I think uh, some of my uh, discussions should be included in, uh, into the meeting minutes. Uh, so I just read that. Uh, for example, the section <clears throat> for section five, new business item A, school board policy revisions and uh, policy 0143. And during discussions, I said, member one, I believe the school board policy committee uh, should present this updated uh, policy for board approval after open door meeting. Uh, so basically follow the uh, uh, open door law. So after that meeting, and then uh, the board policy committee submit uh, the revised uh, policy for board approval. And uh, item B, school board policy revisions for policy 0171-3. That's regarding, um, regarding our uh, board uh, secretaries. And uh, during discussion member one, I have some uh, some uh, discussions which I, I would like to put them into the meeting minutes. Uh, one is the updates of this policy are uh, substanti substantial. All existing clause have been uh, replaced. Uh, so I think it's a big change. It's not uh, just change the numbers, it's minor change, uh, grammars. So per our school bylaws, such change need two readings before about voting. So that's my the first uh, uh, things I want to include in the meeting minutes. Uh, the second one, the clause C in the repeal the policy, uh, which is the old version. Uh, maybe we need to keep that because um, uh, that's clause saying uh, the school uh, board secretary should uh, provide annual uh, annual report of our uh, of our uh, school corporation. And uh, actually, I think uh, that's the inter. Indiana code require uh, the secretary of uh, govern governmental entities, of course, includes school, school corporation with long term, say longer than five years debit, so to publish uh, annual financial report. So I think that clause should be kept, not should be, not sh shouldn't be removed. So that second uh, item I want to put into the meeting minutes. And third one is uh, per Indiana code, um, uh, there's uh, oh, there's regarding uh, the uh, our school's uh, executive secretary uh, because our Indiana code uh, there's code to ask uh, if we have uh, uh, executive secretary for school board, and we need uh, there's some procedures we should uh, follow. Basically, uh, the superintendent uh, recommend uh, school employees as a board executive secretary, and the school board approve the recommendation so that we can officially uh, set up the position of executive secretary for our school board. So I think we should uh, follow the Indiana code uh, regarding that uh, executive secretary of our school board. And uh, down to the board members uh, informations, uh, there's a specific section I shared. Uh, when things uh, didn't document on the meeting minutes, uh, I suggest to make our board meeting agenda more flexible so people can add on some things or remove some things and also regarding uh, the item right now we have communications from the audience this item on our agenda 
I, uh, I would suggest remove the limitations of current agenda items from discussions. So basically, any uh, community members, if want, they want to share something, they can step forward, share that, not only limited on the uh, item, on the agenda item, so that we can have open and a welcome environment for the community members. Uh, so that's the, the things I want to uh, put into the meeting minutes of uh, April 10th. And uh, I have, uh, have that. Moment. Okay, so just to be clear, you're interested, all of these items have been voted on or were not on the agenda and voted on, and you are interested in a transcript of your comments on selected items being added to the minutes from tonight's meeting. Is that a correct summary of what you're asking for? Um, generally, some of them, yeah, I, some of my discussions okay. should be. Uh, do we have any comments from anyone else on that idea of including partial transcripts from our meetings in our minutes? Mrs. Mumford? I think it's helpful to have more details in the minutes. Um, for example, recently I was reading the city council minutes and they had shared comments from various board members. Um, and presentation. So even if you weren't able to attend, you didn't have to go watch the entire thing that was going on. So it was very helpful. Um, so I do think it would be helpful. Some of the points that Lawrence had emailed previously that he wanted added to this are details that he feels like are involved in Indiana code. And so I agree that there's more details that should be added to our minutes. So who um, would you like to pay to do all of that transcribing and who would you like to determine um, what are the important things to be transcribed versus uh, those that one individual member might feel need to be transcribed? Mrs. Mumford? So, I mean, I, this is something we could ask other councils how they handle it. From my understanding, we wouldn't need to pay someone. It would just be school board members giving insights and then deciding together, just like recently, the minutes that were, um, the draft that was shared, there were parts that I disagreed with. Um, and like I have each month I sent it, and this month you agreed to sh um, correct them. In the past, you haven't agreed to correct them. And so it's just a decision of, I see it more of a collaborative approach where members are saying, this is what I think goes in it. And then if there's anything that's disagreeable, then that would be something that would come to this meeting. Well, so minutes are, um documentation of transactions of things that have happened in a meeting not of individuals commentary so what uh, mr wong and he did email me his comments before he didn't actually say many of those words in the in that order so a transcript of what he said in the meeting would not resemble what he wrote after the meeting as his comment upon the discussion so that's kind of my point to you is Minutes are not an opportunity for individual board members, myself or any other board member, to add their commentary to what happened in the meeting. It would only be a documentation of what actually transpired. It would be unfair to those observing them to read them and believe they were fact when they were not. So that's my question to you. If we, in my opinion, if we're going to transcribe all of our minutes, transcribe every word spoken in a meeting, that is a substantial job for someone to do who we will have to pay to do that job. And I don't know that we, it would have to be, I think all words, not just selected words. And I'm not sure that that benefits or is helpful to the role of a school board in governance, but I am open to other ideas if any other member, Mrs. Austin. Just for reference, I used to do transcription and I got paid a dollar for every 10 words. Okay. So that's how much that would cost if you extrapolate out. Uh, I think Ms. Dr. Yin had her hand up first. I'm sorry, Dr. Yin, did you have a comment? Uh, thanks. Uh, so I also agree that uh, we can put more details in the minutes, but I understand that that's a lot of work and uh, it shouldn't be the, you know, it's not a regular job of uh, Roberta and we shouldn't put the extra burden on her. And however, I think we can use some technology. For example, the YouTube actually can transcribe the, the sound if we have good high quality sound and automatically it can be transcribed. And uh, so there will be a way to download those transcripts and uh, to use that as a base. Surely we don't do like a word by word transcribing, um, but I do, Actually, I happen to observe what uh, data observed regarding the city council, city council minutes, and uh, like last week, we there's an election for the city council members, and uh, 
I, I didn't follow the city meetings uh, closely before, then I tried to see what their position on different issues. I just went to those minutes and uh, I can exactly see who voted, uh, who said what. And uh, so the main, main points, not exactly every single word. And uh, so I also, I, I don't have, I didn't check it recently, but last time I checked, I look at uh, Carmel's uh, district minutes and uh, they have more details than what we do, but I understand they have bigger, their district is bigger, they have more money, everything. But but yes, I agree, I, we we can have more details there than what we have now. And, but again, it shouldn't be Roberta's, you know, <laughs> responsibility. We probably need to all figure out a way to do it. So is there any reason why if someone really, I mean, I, I question how many people were serving uh, in doing that. Is there any reason why a patron who approached us and was interested in knowing exactly what each member said would not be directed to either listen to the audio or watch the video that's Yeah, posted? I think that's definitely there's a need for it. And uh, as far as I know, many um, community members uh, uh, enjoy reading data summary, meeting summary, because there are more details and people are very busy. They don't have time to come to the meeting or even watch the video like for two, one or two hours. And the summary will be very helpful for them to get the main ideas about what's going on and uh, to be informed. And I think uh, we don't have to solve the problem right away, but it can be something we need to discuss from mm, the is, practical solution. Mm, Mrs. Austin? It sounds to me like the folks who are interested in having a transcript of the meeting online should take the initiative to put an accurate transcript of the meeting together after this meeting, and then we can all see how much time that takes and if it is a, a useful document beyond what's already available. I think I, I I'm, if any member would like to transcribe our meeting tonight. Uh, the difficulty with that is checking it for, ask, for accuracy. Um, Dr. Yin mentions Mrs. Mumford's summaries. I've received far more complaints about Mrs. Mumford's summaries than I have um, compliments of them. So, and I know other members may have received different communications. So um, again, I, I cannot stress enough that the purpose of meeting minutes is to document transactions taken, act votes made, decisions made, that is what minutes are for. So I think we have, and we made it an objective over the past year and a half, really uh, to increase the quantity of descriptive content in the minutes um, while keeping them completely accurate, as accurate as we can to what happened in them uh, without any commentary. Um, and so that um, that's certainly something we can discuss further. Uh, I would suggest that maybe we put it on the agenda meeting for uh, the agenda for the next meeting to discuss if we want to go to a transcript format. Um, Dr. Greiner, would you be able to help us understand if there are any other school corporations who transcribe their meeting minutes and what potentially the cost of transcription might be before our next meeting? Would that be something reasonable to ask you to do? Yes, Mrs. Wood, I can do that. Thank you. Mrs. Mumford. Um, I would be more interested in a transcription of it. I guess I haven't understood that that's what any of us have requested. We're just asking for more details. Um, I agree that more details have been added in the last um, few months, but the interesting thing is the details are on like board reports or the administration recognizing um, different students or organizations where when we're actually voting on things that the community really wants to learn more about, it often will just say discussion um, ensued. And so I think, for example, the city of um, West Lafayette may be a good place that we could turn. They don't do a transcript of theirs, but they do share more details. And that's at least my understanding what we're interested in, not in doing a transcript. Well, my, my concern with it being a transcript is that uh, I would anticipate that there will be concerns among members based on how much time we've spent in the past four months discussing our minutes at meetings that there would be some amount of conflict over whose comments got included and whose did not. So um, I would suggest to you that if we were going to go the route of adding commentary by individual members, that it would have to be all of the commentary by all members so that we could avoid substantial dialogue over our minutes and meetings. 
So I think it's an all or nothing proposition. Mr. Shaw is nodding yes to that as well. Yeah. And maybe YouTube's a viable option, but someone's gonna have to proofread that because some of us are more soft spoken than others and maybe they don't hear the transcription and what was that word and just think someone here that could actually a professional stenographer or something might be what we have to do if that's what we want to, the route we want to go. I just I think of all the things that we could <clears throat> need to spend a lot of discussion on as a school board that our minutes might not be at the top of my list anyway, but perhaps they are at the top of someone else's list. Uh, Mr. Wong. Yeah, I think I need to make corrections. Uh, you say that I make some comments after meeting. It's not uh, really the comments after meeting. I think that's the summary for what I talked. So that's basically, I don't think we, we need a transcript word by word. We just leave. So basically, Indiana Code say the general substance for all matters proposed, discussed, or decided. So substance means summary, high level, what's the essential things. So basically what I said is pretty uh, high level summary for my, uh, uh, what I talked, discussed in the meeting. So that's one thing. Another thing I think um, I agree with you, uh, this is my personal opinion, but uh, when we share our personal opinion, you, me, everybody, and that's not only our personal opinion, that's our business. We're doing our business. That's part of official action, so-called official action, which include discussions, board members' discussions, uh, proposals, decisions. So I think that should be documented in the meeting minutes. So basically, by doing this, we can follow our open door laws. So uh, we got everything, uh, key information documented. And also, I mean, if we school board follow the laws, we can at least eliminate the potential liabilities, you know, that's uh, maybe financial, somebody file a claim, and then we have to handle that, and also the reputations, so that kind of thing. And uh, as public office, I mean, we, we sworn in, and we should follow the, the code. So I think that's, uh, there's several, <laughs> there several benefits, and also say we can improve our transparency and uh, accountabilities. So who, say for example, I'm probably sometimes I'm the only Decisant. I'm the only person who will know for something, and then I want my uh, rationales uh, why I will know for that. So people, when people see the read the meeting minutes, they understand. Oh, okay. So this what this guy is not vote for for no, just for no reason. Okay, there's some reason. So I think there's. Uh, I think we have uh, if we have include more information in the meeting minutes, uh, th that's will be a lot of benefit. So I, I, that's my my. <clears throat> this is Austin. One of the things that was emphasized to me during my board training is that once the board has voted on an action, whether it is seven to zero or four to three, it's the responsibility of each board member to support the action of the board as a whole, because each of us individually doesn't have any power unless we're in this room. And I think by calling out individually who voted yes and who voted no, or by documenting comments that may disagree with what ends up being voted on we're undermining that principle of everyone supporting the decision of the board as a whole thank you for your feedback um mr wong if you'll hold on for just a moment please i don't i i mr shot go ahead sorry we're gonna be here all night at this right yep. dr Reiner's gonna do some research we're gonna look on the youtube we're gonna look at some other possibilities let's put it on the agenda for next month and we can have a vote if we want to expand the minutes to a transcript, to a YouTube. We, we know where we all stand here. Let, let's don't make the meeting last forever over, over, over minutes. Thank you. We'll be um, Dr. Reiner, one thing is concerned me that uh, Mr. Wang has um, indicated tonight is that he does not feel that we are in compliance with Indiana's open door law. If you would please, I know that we've taken this to the attorney previously, but if you would please take it again to our attorney at Church Church, Hiddle and Antrim, and ask them to review our notes and confirm that we are indeed in compliance or if we are not in compliance with Indiana Open Door laws. That would be a good validation uh, given the uh, implication that Mr. Wong has given that we are not. Mr. Wong, did you have any further comments? Yes, I just saw uh, the comments regarding uh, um, Ms. Austin. Uh, regarding there's maybe if each one we share different opinions that may be uh, cause deviations or something. I think when we share different opinions, uh, it will help us understand each other better and uh, help us build up the teamwork. I think that uh, we'll be better off 
by share more information so we know each other better. So we build up trust and build up collaborations. collaborations. Generally speaking, Mr. Wong, that would happen during the discussion on the item, not during the discussion on the minutes about the item and the following meeting. Yes, right. yes. So okay. that's why I say when we more share more information on the meeting minutes and then we can understand each other better. So. Well, I would hope um, that we would listen to one another in the meeting and understand one another better in that moment. Okay, but, that's okay. okay. so our follow-up is going to be that Dr. Greiner is going to um, help us out uh, reviewing what other school boards do on this matter. So am I reviewing what other school boards do or am I reviewing, what, are there school boards, school corporations that transcribe and what is the cost for transcribing? Because that's what I originally heard, yes. but then I thought I heard individuals saying that it's not really what they were saying, but that's what you want me to look at for number one, correct? Correct. And then for number two, you want me to contact our attorney and ask if we are in compliance regarding how we are currently, how the board is currently documenting their minutes, have her review some of those minutes, maybe even look at one of our board meetings and ask her, are we currently considered in appliance based on compliance based on her uh, legal um, advisement? That's correct. Okay. Uh, and then we will add that to our agenda for next month to discuss if we as a board want to vote on changing to a transcription model for our minutes or if we are satisfied with the current model or if we want to consider some other um, midway model to that. Okay, so could we take a vote on our minutes tonight? So we are basically, we don't have a motion, right? We yeah. have to vote on our minutes to approve yeah, them. But, uh... Basically, I'm trying to have a motion to add that on the meeting minutes, but you say probably we don't need to do that. Um, okay, we can take a vote. Uh, huh? Mr. Wong is asking, uh, Mr. Wong is- Or maybe we table that. We can offer we get some more information. All of these things require a motion and a vote. So, <laughs> or do you want to let them go and, and and be satisfied with the conversation happening at the next meeting for a vote? Or would you like to vote on adding your particular comments to the minutes from last month's meeting? Yeah, I have a motion to add those things on. So. Okay, so Mr. Wong has made a motion that we add his comments as he's described them to the minutes of the April 10th regular board meeting. Can I get a second, please? Mr. Marley has second the addition of Mr. Wong's commentary to the meeting. Can we take a vote? Are there any more comments before we vote? Yeah, I just a uh, 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 share some uh, of my experience on the park board, and uh, actually we are suggested to uh, send to the secretary and the comments we made at the board at the board meeting, so to help her with the minutes writing. So similarly, we can, you know, ask each of the board members to send their main points, summarized from what the, the, the comments they made at the meeting and uh, to Roberta, for example, and to add to it. Then each board member will review the minutes with everybody's contribution. That can be a solution. Okay, so that would be on the agenda item for next month on that discussion that we've added to next month's agenda. Right now, we are taking comments on, in particular, Member Wong's motion to add his comments to the April 10th meeting. Any other comments on that topic? I'm sorry, we have to keep trying, keep the, I have to follow the train on the tracks. Okay, let's take a vote. All of those in favor of adding Member Wong's commentary to the April 10th board meeting minutes, please indicate with a show of hands. All those in favor. Okay, uh, members Yin, Wong, Mumford, and Marley agree to that. All of those opposed? Mr. Schott, Mrs. Austin, and myself are opposed. To be clear, um, to direction to you, Mrs. Julian, those should be added as Member Wong's commentary to those actions, to those items taken. I don't know how you indicate them as commentary, but please send those to our Secretary Austin. Specify it uh, as uh, uh, Mr. Wong's comments, maybe if anybody who wants to add anything, their own comments, and then they can do that too. Because so we voted on the really minutes. not a Mr. Wong's issue. I feel it's more a general issue we, if we want to make the minutes to have more details. Mr. Wong's made a motion to add his comments. 
It's oh, a Mr. Wong yeah. motion. motion. So you have to make it that specific. specific. We can't, we don't need to talk about our answer because the motion was made and then we voted and his comments are going to be added. So only his comments can be added. That's, at this point in time, that's it. And then next month we'll discuss okay. whether or not we would like to change the format of the minutes. Yeah, that's what we're working on. Okay. <laughs> Okay, so we are going to move on now to approving the minutes overall because we still have to vote on the rest of the minutes. So can I get, we've already had a motion and a second. All of those in favor of approving our regular meeting minutes of April 10th. As they will be amended. As they will be amended with member Wong's commentary, please indicate with a show of hands. That is seven to zero, Mrs. Julie, and that motion carries. We're going to move on to communication from the audience. We have two people signed up this evening. Um, the first one is on an agenda item. I would like to invite Laura Marie Williams up to speak. Sit at that gray table right there. Yep, thank you very much. Thank you for your patience tonight. So first of all, dear school board members, I would like to thank you for the work you do for West Lafayette students and thus the West Lafayette community. Um, I'm here in the interest and support of fair, appropriate public education for students within, uh, with disabilities within the West Lafayette school system. Uh, West Lafayette School Corporation is full of excellent students, advanced learners, and academic superstars, high ability students. This is the history of West Lafayette School Corporation. I'm a graduate. Uh, my brother and sister are graduates, 1978, 1976. They were academic superstars, me, no. But anyway, um, so long history of academic excellence, which is wonderful. Um, I am here um, in support of any efforts of the school corporation to support these students. I am also here though to advocate for and ask that students with disabilities uh, served by the special education departments at the respective West Lafayette School Corporation schools be given the same support as high ability students uh, at the re respective West Lafayette School Corporation schools. Um, Unofficially speaking, because I belong to several groups for parents of disabled students based in Indiana and locally here, um, typically parents in, of students with disabilities within the West Lafayette School Corporation um, are really looking for more transparency. Um, we are interested in getting statistics regarding numbers and ratios of special education students to teachers, to paraprofessionals, to administrators, and the monies spent in support of fair, appropriate public education for these students with, it, with disabilities within uh, our schools, within the school corporation. Uh, we would like that to be public information. Um, we would also like that an audit be done and made available uh, to the public to suss out how many students have chosen to leave the West Lafayette School Corporation in order to pursue um, their educational needs at another institution. Um, over the years, unfortunately, I've known many families personally who felt that their child's needs were not getting met within our school corporation and had to pursue uh, getting special ed services from the county or the city schools and felt that their children had their needs better met there. And um, I think we are uh, an institution that should be capable of doing that as well, right, for these students. Um, I hate to see those students leave. Um, the lastly, um, that a review of the special education programs be done to ensure they're up to federal ADA standards, current evidence-based practice, established educational criteria for learning disabled students, particularly regarding students with learning disabilities, because within the last three years, there have been changes on the federal level for uh, students with learning disabilities. And I know kind of in the Indiana state level, um, we kind of waffled on acknowledging, you know, those standards. And so I feel that, that we are, are a school corporation of means and that sh we should be able to be on board with those federal standards, even if other school systems in Indiana are not. 
So that's basically it. I thank you for all you do. And yeah, so any questions? Thank you very much for being here this evening. Sure. Member I Wong, did you have a question for her? <clears throat> yeah, first, you can go. It's just a quick uh, thank you very much for sharing your your uh, your concern and comments. And I wonder whether you can share your written comments with uh, uh, Roberta so, so she with can in, in, include it in the minutes. I'm sorry, my uh, comments with the Roberta, the central office. Uh, Member Yin is asking if you could share what you have read to us tonight so that we could have it as an accurate reference. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. That would I, be I lovely. Say, if I'll, you... I'll follow this up in letter format. Yes. That would be wonderful. I was going to maybe conclude with that. So, yeah, I'll follow this up. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> okay. Thank you. So when you talk about the disability students, uh, did you include those uh, special needs students? Or... Absolutely. So that's that, what that is, that is particularly, not because of this I mean, right. I mean, students uh, served within, particularly served within the special education umbrella. However, yes, students with physical disabilities, you know, we need to make sure we are uh, serving them adequately as well. Okay. That's why I use the term students with disabilities. But I particularly mean students with intellectual disabilities, students under the umbrella of special education services within all the, the schools learning and the corporation. Special, special something, special need. And right. Learn your learning capacities. Yes. And capacity. within that, of course, there are all sorts of different types of, you know, children being gotcha. served and students yes, being served. Appreciate it. Yes. Any okay. Request? Thank you so much for being Thank here tonight. Thank you very tonight. much. I'll, and I wish I will, I will tune in via YouTube. I think I have a YouTube link, so right. I will do that for the rest. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Thank you very much. Okay. So we are going to move on to item four, Wellness Center After School Care MOU. Dr. Greiner. Do you have before you the MOU between the Wellness Center and the school corporation regarding another school option for our families for after school uh, care? Um, at this time, I'd like to invite Ashley Connor to come forward uh, and share with the board what this program will look like. Hello, Hello. Um, my name is Ashley Connor, a youth development coordinator for West Lafayette Parks and Recreation. Um, so since about January, I think, we've been meeting with um, your wonderful administration um, and we have been working together to solve um, part of the problem of after school care in West Lafayette. Um, we have a wonderful community with not very many options. <laughs> um, and, um, you know, parents, I started with the Parks Department in 2021 after teaching first grade. Um, and parents would constantly ask me, do you have an after school care program? We're desperate. And I would have to say, I am so sorry. We do not, but we're working on it. And we've, we've been saying that for about two years. Um, and I constantly just have these conversations with parents. I mean, it's a weekly conversation. Parents will joke and they'll say, it's cutthroat when we go to the register for programs. And they're joking, but at the same time, it's an issue. Um, and so we would like to be part of that solution. Um, and so before you, like Dr. Greiner said, you have an MOU. Um, where the West Lafayette School Corporation has agreed to provide transportation um, for a wonderful after-school care program at the West Lafayette Wellness Center. Um, so how we foresee this program playing out is um, having an enriching program for kids where they arrive at the Wellness Center, they have a snack. Um, we foresee them having about 30 minutes of built-in educational homework time um, where they can have a choice to read or work on any homework that they have with our staff members. And then they'll be given the opportunity um, to do physical activities like playing outside, playing in the gym, uh, things along those lines. Um, we believe that it'll be a wonderful program uh, and we appreciate your approval. I'd be happy to answer any questions that you might have. Okay, well, we will start with a motion, please. Can I get a motion? Okay. Moved by Mrs. Mumford, second by Mr. Marley. Okay, do we have questions, comments? Thank you for being here tonight. Yeah, of course. Member Mumford. Thank you for coming. And this is so exciting. I know lots of our parents are very excited. Do you know when registration for the parents um, will be opened up and how they get more information? Yes. So we will begin registration online 
um, or you can come to the you know wellness center in person to register. Um, that will be Monday, May 15th, starting at 7 a.m. Um, due to our current staffing situation, we are comfortable taking about 45 kids to start. From there, um, you know, I'm hiring on lots of camp counselors for the summer. If some of those decide to stay on into the fall to work this program, then from that point on, we could add more spots off of a waiting list. Um, but yes, registration is set to open on 15th. Thank you. Other questions? Yeah. Member Wong? Yes. Okay, thank you. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Did you? Okay. <clears throat> Member Yin, did you have something? Or was it Member Wong, did you have a question? Yeah. So basically, we don't have any specific plans for the student right now. Right now, it's just some physical activities, readings, a general idea. We don't have any specific uh, programs yet. We wouldn't, it wouldn't be a specific schedule. Um, so for example, for our summer camp program, we send out a specific outline schedule at times due to the duration of that program. Okay. However, since this would only be, you know, a three hour program, um, we would have activities planned, but there would not be a set specific schedule. Oh, okay. So yes. we don't see, say, from five, four to five, there will be a swimming class or something like that. We, don't, we probably we don't have that. We have looked into adding those options. Um, I always, you know, tell my staff, my goal is always to start small, do some one thing very well, and then build on to that. So we have looked at adding on swim lessons or adding on options such as private tutoring, but again, start small and then add on. Makes sense. And also uh, the student, uh, can they enroll in the full-time or part-time? Say they only have, say, Monday, Tuesday and the other three days they don't want. Is that, uh, we have that flexibility? At this moment, since we are limited on the number of children that we can take, um, we are only accepting kiddos that can come full time. Full -time. So Monday okay. through Friday, correct. And if they have to miss a day here or there, that's okay, but they would be signed up for a full time program. Another question, basically, which is also my major concerns. <clears throat> I mean, they, they are, I mean, we school have the whole, um, uh, safety things, but when we move to there uh, regarding the safety of kids, I mean, they are young kids. I mean, do we have uh, that kind of things? Uh, make sure those kids are in, in that three hours pretty safe. Yes. So um, I can tell you that the West Lafayette Parks Department maintains a minimum ratio of one adult for every 10 children. <laughs> Um, so for a group of 45 kids, we would usually have about four to five staff members. Um, and we are very experienced in running these types of programs. I mean, um, as I said, I was a former first grade teacher myself. I know how important those kiddos are, um, you know, and we, our staff go through a lot of training before they, before they start working with kids. They go through everything from, um, behavior management to, um, you know, child abuse prevention, all of those types of training. So um, I have no doubt that they would be kept safe and it would be a great environment. Okay, uh, last question. Sorry about so many questions. Last question. Uh, so somebody have already had a membership with the wellness centers. Do they have some priority or they can have discount or something? No, this program will be open to everyone at the same time. Okay. Um, so no, there would be no extra like early registration for wellness center members. But regarding the cost, uh, do you have any? The cost would also be the same um, at this point in time. Um, it would be $85 per week per child. Um, there would be a third child discount and that would discount the rate to $70. Um, and we would also have our regular scholarship program available um, for parents to apply for scholarship funds if that would be applicable for their situation. So the first two kids, uh, each one is $80, $85. The third kids can seven. Correct, yes. Gotcha. Okay, I think that's all. Thank you. Appreciate yes, it. Yes, you're welcome. I do have a question that's probably perhaps a little bit more for Mrs. Delaney. Um, I notice on here that there's no um, obligation listed for the student with regard to supervision of the children after school. Who do you anticipate in your building would be responsible for the communication? Should there be problems that arise, that type of thing? I understand that until you pass them off. They're your responsibility. So do you right. have a plan for that, Mrs. Delaney? Do you feel comfortable that you're resourced for that well? Right. Okay. That's really my concern. It's already hot and happening. Yes. We're going to turn the heat up a little more. Okay. All righty. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? 
Okay, all those in favor of? I have a question for Dr. Greiner. Um, she did great, so I didn't know if she needs to be excused or whatever. Thank but you, Ashley. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. I just had a question about the bus utilization. Yes. I'm just sharing. So the MOU is that we're providing a bus. And so what is the best situation? Do we have additional buses that aren't being used that are used for this? And how does that work in our district? So we worked very closely with Mr. Caldwell because originally when we were meeting to partner, the transportation has been what's been in the way. And so the Parks and Rec Department has determined employees that are going to go through the training. I believe one has passed already. Yes. And so that's a great first step. But then the, they will be employed by the school corporation for that uh, transportation. The bus, because you asked the question about the bus. The, yeah, the bus, we have a bus that is used for the tripper to the athletic complex that bus will be available during the time that the transportation would need to occur so we would have the bus available for that awesome thank you you're welcome yes mr wong so yeah thank you so we already have an mou so this mou is uh, how far away to finalize our contract or something like that from this when we vote on it yes when you when you vote Oh, okay. Tonight, if you vote to approve that, you've voted to approve the relationship, okay. and we've got another program that's available to our families. Oh, okay. gotcha. Thank you. Appreciate it. You're welcome. Well, oh, you're going to ask okay. if there's more questions. Go yeah, ahead. are there any other questions or comments regarding this? Okay. You've heard the, uh, you've heard Mrs. or Miss <laughs> uh, uh, Connor speak. Uh, you've uh, entertain questions and you've had the opportunity to, to review the MOU it's my recommendation that the board vote tonight to approve that MOU okay all those in favor of approving this MOU with the City of West Lafayette Parks and Recreation Department please indicate with a show of hands a motion carries seven to zero mrs. Julian thank you and thank you miss Connor for being here tonight we'll move on to sure. item five field trips dr. Greiner it's my recommendation that the board approve the four overnight and or out of state trips uh, that were provided in your packet. Okay, can I get a motion please? Moved by Mr. Marley, second by Mr. Schott. Questions about field trips, anyone? Okay, all those in favor of approving the field trips uh, listed in tonight's packet, please indicate with a show of hands. The motion carries seven to zero, Mrs. Julian. Mrs. Julian. Moving on to item six, a personnel report. And Dr. Greiner. I have a few things to point out here because we saw some things earlier in the packet that I will further explain to the board. So first of all, it's my recommendation that the board vote to approve the personnel report as is now presented in the packet. But I do want to state that you may recall that we have now removed Chauncey Fry to be approved because Chauncey was approved previously. And I would like to provide some explanation of what happened there. Our frontline software uh, generates an automatic report when a principal goes in and makes a change. And so we know that Mrs. Soros made the recommendation to make that move. And that's why the board was asked to vote to approve the, that uh, transfer in February. But then when um, Sarah made the request to, uh, through Frontline, the report generated automatically sent to our office again. And so we put that on there and through the questions, it. it I realize we do not need to put that on the agenda again. So you've already approved it. It's removed simply because you've already approved it. Apologize for any confusion. Finally, before you vote to approve, I just want to recognize Kim Lancaster. Uh, she's being approved for retirement tonight. We want to thank her for the over 30 years of service in our district. Now with that, I <clears throat> recommend the board vote to approve. Okay, can I get a motion, please? Moved by Mrs. Austin, second by Mrs. Mumford. Uh, just as a comment to all members, as you are aware, we will celebrate all of our retirees at our next <coughs> board meeting um, with the reception prior to meeting and the, rec the recognition that we do 
uh, is typical for retirees. Obviously, buildings also uh, have individual retirement celebrations and do those things among staff members and team levels. So uh, there's a lot of celebrating going on for our retirees, much deserved celebration going on for our retirees. Uh, so that will be forthcoming and I'll have more information about that uh, celebration uh, as we get closer to that meeting time. Okay, any other? I'm gonna abstain. Mr. Marley's gonna abstain. His wife is listed in the personnel report. Sure. <laughs> uh, and he seems to be pleased with that. Mr. Wong. Basically, I'm still wondering uh, because right now we have uh, the school board, have uh, uh, executive secretary. I just wondering, do we go through this process? And basically, you nominate, uh, recommend the person with school board approval, so we can officially establish the, this position, executive secretary. Because I mean, <clears throat> when our school hires somebody, we go through a process, right? We open opening people up, and then you submit this thing to board board approval. But now we have uh, executive secretary work for us diligently, and. Uh, I think we need to follow the, the rules, the procedures, go through these things, officially set up this uh, position. I mean, that is my opinion. So do you think that makes sense? So you think that that makes sense? As my, as my understanding, Mrs. Julian, when she was hired into the position, was um, listed as the executive secretary on that hire, both of the board and the corporation. But I would be happy to ask her to research that around the time of her hire she would like to do that and if we do need to do an additional vote we can do that but i i believe uh that that's just part of her normal job description is that what you also believe in my experience in the previous district in this district it's been the administrative assistant to the superintendent but if the board would feel more comfortable voting that obviously I, I believe it's in her official job description and we voted when we voted to hire mrs julian that was in her job description but Perhaps we could research that for Mr. Wong's satisfaction, please. Okay, um, so moving on to the personnel report, we are ready for a vote. All those in favor of approving the personnel report as submitted, please indicate with a show of hands. A motion carries seven to zero, Mrs. Julie. Six. I'm sorry, six to zero. All those opposed? All those abstain? I'm sorry, thank you. Mr. Marley abstains. You're off to my peripheral vision. Yes. Mr. Marling, my apologies. Yeah. Okay. Moving on to item seven, student code of conduct, handbook revisions, Mrs. Roth. The student code of conduct for each of the three schools was provided to you in the board packet. There was one question regarding the Willis code of conduct, and there was a sentence that was removed for clarity and to bring consistency with the other codes of conduct based upon the update to those codes of conduct. We recommend on behalf of the schools that you approve those as they were presented to you in the packet. Okay, so let's start with a motion, please. Moved by Mr. Schott, second by Mr. Wong. Discussion about the handbook revisions. Mr. Wong. Yeah, okay. I have uh, uh, some question regarding this uh, code of conduct. I saw there are some uh, <coughs> disciplines, uh, the procedures. I just wondering, do we, uh, when we uh, working those uh, uh, procedure uh, procedures uh, do we work with uh, we get any input from parents we work with them I can uh, ask about that is okay. there one in particular that you would like us to ask about the high school the junior the uh, high school junior high or the elementary or just, the intermediate to just, describe what their procedures were uh, generally speaking because uh, <clears throat> I look at the Indiana code and they say the school board should get the parents involved, uh, review that from time to time, and then that kind of thing. So I just wondering, uh, did we did that things from time to time? Or? So to summarize, you would like us to inquire to each of the three schools how parents were involved in the process of the code of conduct? Yeah, if there are any parents involved, just okay. highlight or general. You know, okay. I don't need yeah. too much time and for okay. that. I just and another question. Um, it's uh, because some uh, some students have some uh, mental issues. So when we go through those uh, discipline or whatever, uh, that kind of thing, do we take that into considerations? The the mental, the student mental situations. You I'm see? not. I'm, I'm not following the 
trying say, to find out on this Somebody say, for example, um, some people have mental, some students have mental issues, yeah. and they really violent, violate some uh, school rules, whatever, and then there are some disciplines, whatever. And in that case, do we uh, take that in that into consideration? We have some counselors, you know, talk to people, you know, that, that I don't know how to do that, but just uh, just wondering, because they, they are kind of a different student, not as a, uh, yeah. you know. I think it would be safe to say, and we have two principals in the building, not the third, but I think it is fair to say that students are treated in a manner that is individualized and reflects their needs and their strengths, and that that is taken into consideration. I also think it's probably fair to say we follow Indiana State Code. Indiana State Code would dictate that there are some things in which you have no leeway. Weapons would be one. Um, those would be the pretty big ones. And so we follow Indiana State Code when we must. If a student has an IEP, we follow the IEP. And otherwise, I think the, you correct me if I'm wrong, I think it would be fair to say we try and fit the consequences to be a teaching moment that would be applicable for the student, it, developmentally appropriate. Am I out of? And I would just stress the IEP that the, if, if it's written because there could be a situation that's related uh, to, to um, uh, a disability that would be discussed at the case conference table and then the IEP is followed and supports may be uh, developed within that IEP. And then you've got a collaborative partnership among um, all individuals wrapping supports around that student. Dr. Greiner, could I also ask you please to um, reach out to um, Mrs. Shelby Johnson to provide the board with some um, description of appropriate language in reference to our students who have disability so that we all as a board may grow in our ability to communicate about all of our students in a way that's respectful of them and um, respects their dignity. Would you re re develop a develop a perhaps a, a some type of resource for us to review as a board, so we as individual members could grow in our understanding of appropriate language when speaking of our um, students with developmental disability. <clears throat> Might be an area of growth for all of us to have the best words to use. Um, when we're when we're speaking of these issues in our meetings. Okay, any other questions about the student of, student code of conduct? Okay, let's take a vote on that, please. All those in favor of approving the handbook revisions, please indicate with a show of hands. Motion carries seven to zero, Mrs. Julian. Moving on to item eight, out of school program study update and Mrs. Roth. So this is just an overview of what we started earlier in the year. I presume this is going to, or will you do this? It would be wonderful if you would, I would greatly appreciate it. So the study group itself process started earlier this year and was helpful in better understanding the overall issues surrounding out of school care needs in the community. I do wanna note it was a study group. The goal was to understand problems, understand solutions that maybe had occurred elsewhere or had occurred here previously, and to kind of gather information to try and under, better get an idea of how to move forward. So the study group started small, and that started with Mrs. Delaney and Mrs. Saros and myself and two parents. And these were parents who had very, very early on expressed concern and an, uh, a desire to help. They had reached out to people and said, hey, I wanna help, how can we do this? And so we started talking and we looked at the questions, what do we need to know? Um, what do we know? How do we gain information? What's working? What needs work? As we talked about those things, we also decided that we wanted to expand our knowledge base. And then we came to the point of, let's look at a survey. So the survey went out in March and the survey also invited others to join the study group. Um, the, it, we got some other participation along that line and then ended up with the opportunity for the expanded study group. The expanded study group looked at the overall results of the survey, of the questions. So you can see here, this, uh, these are the survey questions and results shared with the study group. 36.4% of the 128 families responding participate in care. 
So we had about 128 families respond and roughly 40% of those families, give or take a few, participate in care. You can see a larger number do not. Um, this was asking about before versus after school care as an overall priority. You can see here the after school care is the more um, prioritized for most families. We'll move on. 128 families represented overall 184 children, and you can see the age ranges of the children as different families responded. This one was, I thought, one of the most interesting statistics to find out. Um, the amount spent per household on average per month for out-of-school care. Um, those spending nothing were participating in non nothing at all. Um, we did kind of have a way in the study to find out if they had hired private care, like the equivalent of an au pair or a nanny, to understand that too. So to kind of suss that out, because obviously that comes at a cost as well. And I was, uh, the, the cost astounded me. So when I hear Ashley mention $85 per week per family, and I think of the charges that Safe Harbor charges as well, that it's pretty reasonable. Um, we are providing a service. If we can keep it at that low cost, that's important. And you're going to see cost come up later. So this was to better understand the participation among various programs. You can see the largest number of participants are involved with Safe Harbor. And then you can see Brookshire Learning, Future Scholars, and Just Us Kids were also represented. The other category usually came down to YMCA or privately hired care. On our next slide, this uh, we were asking people about their satisfaction with their programs, and then just broke down those numbers to understand satisfaction with Safe Harbor overall. The larger graph is for all programs. So you can see you've got, what, 56% that are satisfied, 29% that are highly satisfied, and 15.6, um, 16% that are dissatisfied. With Safe Harbor, the number is a little bit higher with overall satisfaction <coughs> at 89% overall satisfaction with Safe Harbor. This is um, summarizing elements, looking at the provider. And you'll see the second graph that we will look at will be the program, but this is the provider itself. So this would be uh, Safe Harbor as an entity, as an agency providing service. And you can see the top three priorities were supportive and caring staff, transportation or on-site care. You're going to see where that connects to, well, you've probably already seen where that connects to something we're doing, and affordability and that I keep on coming back to that number when I saw what people were spending. This next graph represents what the interest is in a program. So this is when my child shows up. What, what do I want out of that experience, if you're thinking of it that way? The top three priorities were active times, this physical movement, active times, non-academic enrichment activities, and socialization. You'll see that the fourth became academic enrichment activities. But those we asked each person to identify their top three priorities and the overall top three. Activity, physical movement. I'm assuming that's because they think kids have probably not been moving much throughout the day. They've had the recess, but other than that, they've been focused on learning, which doesn't always involve a lot of movement. Uh, non-academic enrichment activities and that socialization, that chance to be around peers and to interact with peers. So I want to summarize the work of the study group for you with what we did in our broader study group. So this was the invitation. We did a virtual meeting where those who wanted to participate were invited to participate in a virtual meeting. We reviewed the results of the survey. So we went right through that so that people could see it. And then before we reviewed the results, we asked people to consider two questions. What caught your attention about this survey? What do you believe is the most important priority based on survey results? So when we talked about that, the results were top priorities, increased capacity and or transportation to somewhere, which we got that done. And I think that's a great thing. The next thing we wanna focus on is increased information. 
and this is something that came across in the study group, we have a lot of transients in families, largely families that would be moving into the community, maybe for job purposes, and those families are not always aware of the Brookshire learning, the safe harbor, all of the opportunities that are out there. So the goal is to increase awareness and how we seek to do that is really just, um, I'll work with someone in our office to call different agencies that offer services and say, hey, would you like to be on our resource list? And then also put that out there. As part of the survey process, we also invited people who wanted to know more about how to use our facilities if they were interested in offering some kind of an enrichment activity. So we've given ourselves two tasks moving forward with increasing information. Um, and so next steps, if you would. So you can see we've already got that wellness center agreement in place. And I do want to thank Dr. Purpura uh, from the wellness center. I know he's on their board. He was actually a key in bringing the two entities together to say, hey, we've got a possibility here. Can we work together? We've got a problem. We've got uh, resources on either end. Can we make this work? So kudos to Dr. Purpura. He was very instrumental. I do want to thank Dr. Jing Liu and Dr. Bridget Kelleher. They very early on said, hey, I want to be a part of this solution. They reached out and said, this is an issue. How can we work together to be a part of the solution? They were our two early study group members. And I, uh, I emailed them today to kind of give them the update on what's going on. Um, I didn't want them to think that we forgot about them, but I do want to thank them as well. So the study group helped us understand that we have interest from those in the community who may like to provide enrichment activities as well. Their question is, how do I do that? How could I come to the school to do that? And so that what that helps us understand is we do have a facilities agreement. We do have facilities agreements in place. We do, we do those types of things. We have those types of arrangements. We want to bring clarity and ease to that by making it streamlined and straightforward. And then we've got some list of people who are interested in having that information. So we want to get it to them. So that's the next step in place. And then I said, we also want to reach out to providers to say, are you interested in being on our resource list? And if they are, we want to, we want to make that obvious. I know people have suggested when registration occurs that that would be there, that we could get it on the website, that it would just be available and quick and easy, hopefully all in one place. And I understand a quick Google search after school care West Lafayette may yield the same results, but it may not. And we wouldn't endorse anybody that's not our place, but to just to have resources gathered in one place is a starting goal. So that is from um, inception to current. Thank you, Mrs. Connor, for having Ms. Connor for having been here today. That is where we stand. And again, thank you to Dr. Kelleher, to Dr. Liu, and Dr. Purpura, and actually all of our study group members for taking time out to be a part of this. And I want to I want to state too, uh, we know that um, it's it's an ongoing issue. And so this just gives us an idea about how to look forward to that. Thank you, Mrs. Roth. And I agree with you. Those early members uh, to your focus group came in uh, through board members uh, and they were um, it was really wonderful to be able to pass them to you and have you work with them so thoroughly. So thank you for that wonderful transfer. Um, that truly is the role of a board uh, to receive community feedback and pass it to the correct leadership in our corporation. And Mrs. Roth has shown wonderful leadership in that. I'd like to give a little more recognition if I can, because when Dr. Purper first came to me and asked me, can we come together and think about thinking outside the box to do this? When I presented it to both Mrs. Roth and Mrs. Crock and uh, Mr. Caldwell, they all were willing to come together and think about not, we can't do this, but how can we do it? And so that creative thinking of that team, I think was amazing. And I think you came in later, Mrs. Crock. Ms. I think she came in a couple of weeks after Mr. Caldwell and Caldwell and we were all talking, but she very quickly came on and became a part of that problem solving. And so I think teamwork is the dream work for sure here. Thank you all very much for making that happen. We know that there's after school child care issues throughout the state of Indiana. Uh, so it's nice to be ahead of them a little bit. Are there any other comments tonight? Mr. Wong. Just short comments. Thank you for, uh, for your work. I really got a lot of um, 
uh, uh, thank yous from our committee member, positive feedbacks, like specifically for Ms. Farr and the CEO, very eager to listen, willing to work, uh, generally speaking, for our schools uh, for these things. It's really a lot of good feedbacks. Really appreciate it. Thank, thank you. you. Be willing to listen to the community and then take actions to solve the problem. It's really a long term problem. And when my son first entered the kindergarten 15 years ago, no, <laughs> when he was uh, five years old, now he's 15. And so for 10 years, that's a problem. Now we are solving it. That's great. Thanks. So it is important just to reminder to board members when you want to speak, if you will motion to indicate that, it will help our sound person know that you're going to speak so your microphone will be off so that's why it's not i i don't have some strange control feature i i just need you to let me know you want to speak so i can call on you and they can turn your sound on so um i'm afraid the front end of your comments might not have hit the recording dr yin uh, so so you're aware okay any other comments okay um that is wonderful information. Thank you very much, Mrs. Roth. We're going to move on to item number nine, the WGU affiliation agreement and the Willis nurse intern and Mrs. Roth. So this was an agreement that came to us from Willis and has the support of the administration and the two nurses at Willis. They are hopeful that you will approve this agreement so that they could welcome a nurse intern into their school to learn from them and with them and also support them. So uh, we recommend that you approve the WGU affiliation agreement as provided in the packet. Okay, let's start with a motion, please. So moved by Mrs. Austin. Second. Second by Mr. Marley. Comments or questions? Okay, hearing none, all those in favor of approval of the WGU affiliation agreement, please indicate with a show of hands. That motion carries seven to zero, Mrs. Julian. Mrs. Delaney, will you let the nurses know? Thank you. They are excited. Thank you. We are excited as well. All we can do to raise more great school nurses is good for us. Um, item number 10, the junior senior high school gym roof replacement recommendation, Mrs. Crump. Good evening, board. Bids were open this past Thursday at two o'clock p.m. for the replacement of the West Lafayette Junior Senior High School gymnasium roof. The notice of bids was advertised in the newspaper on April 13th and April 20th for state code. Banning Howie assisted with this process. Bids were submitted by three different companies with the lowest overall bid being provided by Foster Contracting at the price of $271,700. As you probably noticed, um, there was quite a spread in the bids submitted by the three companies. Very large spread, the largest I've ever seen in my career. So um, prices can differ based on a number of different things, including but not limited to how busy the company current, currently is um, and the prices they receive from their suppliers at the time that they're doing the bid. Um, Foster Contracting has been in business since 2013, in case you were wondering why they were so low. Um, it, it's apparently has been happening quite a lot with them. I did uh, speak to the guy that came and gave the bid. Um, they have no negative reviews with the Better Business Bureau either. So. Uh, the project is expected to be funded through the operations fund. Please approve the recommendation to use foster contracting as provided. And I am glad it's 271 and not 789. So. Okay, any questions for Mrs. Kronk? Yeah. Oh, sorry, I thought we motioned already. My apologies. I need a motion, please. Mr. Schott, second by Mr. Marley. Questions or comments for Mrs. Kronk? Do you know when they're planning to do it? I believe over the summer. Perfect. Yeah. Yeah, we usually try to do roofing over the summer when no kids are around. So yeah. Awesome. Thank you so much. And this was like as they were as we were reading the bids, I we opened the first one. Like, oh, that's a good bid. Opened up the second one. Then they opened up the third one. He was like, even more like, oh my gosh. <laughs> I sent it to him just to just, just so to somebody get a else could take a look at it. So. <laughs> just to confirm it's not their first rodeo. Not their first rodeo. In the any university student services yeah. building. White River Fire Station, Sugar Creek Fire Station, Spring Mill Elementary, Brown County Library and Music Center, Bartholomew County offices, West Perry Library, Bottle Works on Mass Avenue. They're pretty, they're pretty special. The list goes they're, they're, on and on of profile yeah. Yeah. projects. I'm pretty happy with them, so yeah. And the owner actually is the one that did the bid too, just in case you're wondering, that doesn't always happen, so. Okay, so all of those in favor of approving the uh, roof replacement recommendation, please indicate with a show of hands. 
A motion carries seven to zero. Mrs. Julian, just as a heads up to members, we are going to take a break at eight o'clock. Um, moving on to item number 11, food service contracts, Mrs. Kronk. Uh, Ms. Fitzsimmons is here to explain the process the Food Services Department took part in with the K-12 Leading Indiana Co-op for food bids for the 23-24 school year. Um, she can more eloquently describe the process than I can, as she does, I believe, sit on the advisory board for that. Yes, uh, I do. As well, so, yeah. yes. Please. Thank you. So next school year, the Food Service Department will be starting its sixth year with uh, K-12's leading Indiana Co-op. We had a name change because it was West Indy Co-op, which um, wasn't very true to where we all are um, around Indiana. So the benefit of being in a co-op is to increase our overall purchasing power, um, which helps ensure we get the best quality K-12 products at the best possible price. Uh, so West Lafayette Schools is one of 51 other school districts in the co-op, which represents over 123,600 Indiana students. Uh, throughout the school year, Click members, we meet monthly and try new items for K the, from the K-12 industry. Um, and frequently these items are brought back um, and, and tried with students. So for instance, here, our schools have participated in taste tests for different hamburgers, breakfast items, chicken products, and more. After gathering all feedback as a co-op, we decide what items to place on our commercial and commodity bids. Then at the corporation level, we choose the specific items that would work for our district menus. Uh, these items are decided regardless of the mainline distributor that wins the bid. Uh, so the mainline distributor, which uh, you'll see we're recommending U.S. Foods, is just the vehicle in which each corporation gets the products that we put on the commercial and commodity bigs delivered to their sites. So a good mainline distributor should be willing to work closely with the co-op to stock all items requested. So if it's something that we want, if there's a specific Tyson chicken nugget we want, then U.S. Foods would bring it in specific to us. Um, if board approved, this would be our sixth year with U.S. Foods as a mainline distributor. Although U.S. Foods carries the majority of our products, it is necessary to have other vendors and bids for items that they do not carry, such as dairy, fresh produce, snacks and beverages, frozen novelties, and branded pizza. I believe the documents that you guys have um, have clickable links to show the evaluation criteria and the award letters for each of those. Um, K-12, or click uh, follows the formal bid process outlined by the state purchasing laws um, and utilized an invitation for bid for dairy and requests for proposals for mainline distributor, pizza, and uh, frozen novelties. Bids were per posted twice in the Indianapolis Business Journal as uh, prescribed by state code and were due by April 12, 2023 at 5 p.m. and then were opened publicly on April 13th. All bids were tabulated and approved by the board of directors. And like you said, I serve on the advisory role. Um, and it is worth noting that produce and snacks and beverages RFPs were both renewed for the 23-24 school year. Per uh, Indiana Department of Education procurement regulations, bids may be renewed in one year increments for up to five years. Um, and then you can see the ones that as the food service department, we are re recommending that we purchase from. So that would be U.S. Foods for the mainline distributor, um, Piazza Produce for produce, uh, Dairy Farmers of America for dairy, uh, commercial food systems for snack and beverages, <laughs> Velvet Ice Cream for fro frozen novelties, and Smart Mouth Pizza for the Brandon Pizza. And these are all the same ones that we used this year as well. So um, what questions do you guys have? Well, first we'll start with a motion, please. Moved by Mrs. Austin, second by Mr. Marley. Um, questions for Mrs. Fitzsimmons. Mrs. Austin. I just love it that you use kids to taste test things. I think that's very cool. And I can't imagine my high school ever doing that when I was growing up. So they, they definitely enjoy it. And they're definitely very honest too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I appreciate your leadership in the industry and yes. your pursuit of additional trainings. If I recall, you have participated in a number of professional conferences through the spring. Could you yep. tell us what those are, please? Yep. So um, 
for Indiana School Nutrition Association, uh, starting in July, I will actually be the president of that. And so I went to a national leadership conference um, this past week. And then the week before that, I was on a, a actually at the leadership conference, I did a presentation to um, which was a fun experience. And then um, the week before that, a board retreat. And back in March, I did a legislative action conference. So I got to talk to the legislators about um, why we should feed our kids and get more support. So, Thank you very much for your efforts. Yeah. That's wonderful. Mrs. Fitzsimmons, uh, Dr. Yin, did you have a comment? Uh, th thank you for all the work you, you have done. And um, I wonder, uh, whether we have some uh, system to select uh, su um feedback from families regarding the different food, because uh, besides the co-op, the mm -hmm. overall one, it sounds like my understanding is we do have some options, right? For, for example, pizza and some other snacks stuff. And so now, you know, we are, we need to prove this, but I really feel I don't have full information about how our students feel about those options. And uh, so I can hear feedback from here and there, but they're kind of individual feedback comments. I don't know what, how common those feedbacks are among like uh, more students. So I wonder whether maybe not this time, but in the future, whether we can have some system to solicit feedback from students and families regarding those options? Yeah, of course. So um, we had talked about a while ago, I think it was actually last month, about putting up um, something on our website that parents can put information in anonymously if they want or reach out to me specifically about certain concerns. Um, the one that I'm the most interested in are what the students think. And they, um, so we do a lot of taste testings with them. Um, and they're pretty honest with us too. We did a survey at the end of last year and they gave us a lot of feedback too. Um, so we do go out, we try to seek their feedback, see what they like, what they don't like. Um, it's If something doesn't go over well or isn't well liked, we usually can tell by our numbers of how many we served that day. Um, and then we're pretty quick to say, okay, this one kind of bombed, let's change it with something else. Um, so we do a lot to try to gather that feedback. But I, yeah, we did talk about adding an, a, um, a better source to gaining parent feedback. How to, uh, how do we send that survey and to students or parents? So how, how the one, the one I did last year was um, just to the students um, at the junior senior high school, and I think I sent it to just the junior senior high school student um, database that was in the the email. Okay, so not yeah. parents. Correct, oh, not parents. Okay. Actually. Yeah. Okay, no wonder because I have to see. Okay, yeah. great, thanks. But then in the future, because for the younger kids, maybe we can solicit feedback from parents, so the parents can ask their kids about how they feel about the food and so the options they have, things like that. Yeah. Okay. Great, thanks. Okay. Any other questions, Mr. Wong? Oh, good question. Hi. So you will be the president. Of President, yeah, congratulations. Thank, thank you. you for, thank you for your service. I just a quick question. So we are going to pretty much approve this uh, agreement. So, I mean, this is kind of ongoing things. Mm -hmm. So in the middle of the whole year, uh, if something happened, we still have the flexibilities uh, to change things and make corrections in case something. Yes, so these are how we would get the food, but um, with our co-op, we can bring new items in through US Foods. Okay. So even though we, we agree on US Foods, um, for the year, we can still always bring things in. So if there's a certain product that we don't like, we can get another one in or um, like that. Did that answer your question? Yeah, that's fine. Thank you, appreciate it. All those in favor of approving the uh, food service contracts proposed by Mrs. Crunk and Mrs. Fitzsimmons, please indicate with the show of hands. That motion carries seven to zero, um, Mrs. Julian. Mr. Schreiner, am I correct that a passing period is six minutes? Uh -huh. Five, we went down to five. All right, we are going to take a five minute break. Uh, we will reconvene here at 8.05. Not gonna go well, that part. <laughs> Do we need a bell?
Uh, it is 8.05, so we need to reconvene. We will call everyone back to the table, please. We uh, want to get our um, teachers uh, and administrators home tonight at some point. <laughs> so we'll move on to item 12, the church agreement, Mrs. Crump. Uh, the church has been renting out space here at Happy Hollow now for several years. The renewal agreement for the 23-24 school year is included in your board packets. The only difference is that the original agreement and the addendum have been combined into one lease agreement by our attorney. Uh, monthly rental costs and facilities requested remain the same as in previous years, so please approve the lease agreement as submitted. Okay, could I get a motion, please? So moved. Moved by Mr. Schott, second by Mr. Wong. Questions for Mrs. Kronk? All those in favor of approving the church agreement as presented, please indicate with a show of hands. That motion carries seven to zero, Mrs. Julian. Moving on to item 13, accounts payable finance update, Mrs. Kronk. Claims for the period of April 6th to April 30th, which was the cutoff for this meeting, um, total $2,350,242.35, including regular corporation expenses and the Wabash Valley Education Center expenses. Of this amount, $1,516,625.13 were paid towards wages, salaries, and benefits. Moving on to our preliminary fund report for the month ending April 30th, the education fund has a balance of $1,655,894.48. And total funds on hand for the corporation are $14,809,573.18. Please note that the report is preliminary as we are still entering revenue and have not yet closed the month. I'm sorry I smiled because we were having an inside joke earlier about reading a lot of numbers and yeah. That yeah. comes naturally for her. So. <laughs> <laughs> she does. Yeah. We are continuing with the time clock setup with the goal of going live in July, currently in the office. Um, my payroll specialist, Nathan, is doing a great job working with that. We're, three of us are going through that training to make sure we know what, what we're doing and how we're setting it up. Um, my office staff is also excited to attend the Indiana Association of School Business Officials annual meeting in Fort Wayne this week to learn more about the legislative session, human resources, payroll, and other information related to school finance. I feel like it's important, being a former educator, that um, my staff are educated as well and continue to improve upon themselves. So, And hopefully we can find some um, new information and improve processes and procedures and efficiency in the, in the process. So please approve the accounts payable finance update as submitted. Thank you, Mrs. Kronk. Uh, I need a motion, please. So moved by Mr. Wong, second by Mrs. Austin. Questions for Mrs. Kronk? Okay, hearing, no, hearing none, all is in favor of approving our accounts payable finance update this evening. Please indicate with a show of hands. That motion carries, Mrs. Julian, seven to zero. Thank you. Thank you. Moving on to our next item, board of training discussion. As those of you board members are aware, we had an initial training session with uh, Dr. Donlin earlier this, uh, in the end of April. Um, and the question was raised if we wanted to continue uh, that training with Dr. Donlin, if we wanted to continue some alternative training, if we wanted to, how we wanted to proceed as a board. Uh, so there's no exhibit or information on this, this is, and there is no vote. This is really just us gathering information on the preferences of board members with regard to any additional training that we may pursue as a board. Mrs. Austin. Um, I liked uh, Dr. Donlin, and I thought that what he brought was valuable. Um, however, I don't necessarily feel that everyone is um, willing to change their behavior, and so I don't want to waste time and money if other folks don't agree that it's necessary. Okay, thank you. Any other comments or questions? Mrs. Mumford? I think it's helpful to have a facilitator come in, um, and he had offered to come in. Um, this one was more of just a general training, and he had offered to come in it and do more facilitating um, and reviewing things. So I think it's helpful to have someone outside the community come in and be that facilitator. So I think it would be helpful to take him up on his offer to come back one more time, um, and he said he would do it for free, and then we could determine if it was helpful move forward. I'm not comfortable with being free. I think if we want, if we are committed to him, we pay him. And if he wants to donate that to the foundation or to the general fund or something, but 
you get what you pay for and I'm not saying he would shortchange us by doing it for free, but he's professional, we're a professional organization, we should handle a transaction that way if, if we think it's valuable. And I don't have a strong feeling on it. I thought he was good, but I, I don't know that we're a, help, a group that can be helped, as I said. That's fair, Mr. Schott. Okay. Comments, anybody else? Dr. Yin. I wonder uh, whether we have any other options. So we pay the, uh, the fee, the membership fee to the ISBA every year a lot. And so I wonder what kind of help can we get from them? And uh, it's really those, some of the issues I feel kind of relate to the law. And uh, so I wonder whether people like uh, Julie, I forgot her last name, the attorney sure. in the, yeah, yeah can, can help out and to clarify some of the issues and uh, because I really wish to learn how, what the law says. Because their laws we can read, but you know, as for interpretation, sometimes we have to put it in context. I feel they, they can help us to put things in the context to understand, okay, in this situation, what we should do. And uh, the, so I, I really, yeah, I, I wish to have more options in the, before we decide. Anyone else comments or thoughts on this? I don't, I don't uh, disagree with Dr. Yin. I'd like to believe at a minimum that all of the members agree that all of the other members are generally well-intentioned, capable, and honest, but I'm not sure um, based strictly upon uh, some members' actions that we can presume that. So I think in lieu of, as Mr. Schott and Mrs. Austin have kind of stated, um, and if we can't reach that common agreement, then it makes sense that we would fall back on the structure which would guide the governance of a school, which would be the law uh, and how we pursue it. Um, <clears throat> so we would have options there. We could um work i believe with church church and hiddle we could perhaps work with the isba all of those options will have a cost associated with them so um those would not be included in my understanding in our uh, membership with the isba so if you would like us to reach out i can reach out and try and get some quotes for some board training you've received that training um dr yin when we had um I believe your first year on the board, we had board training that was open to the community as well. Is that the type of training that you were interested in or are you looking for more of a consultation? Things are more general and uh, I, because but some of the issues who we disagree on, or, you know, or we are not sure are more specific. I, I wish to have some customized training instead. Any other comments? Did you have the ICA again when we first boarded? Uh, Michael, Michael Adamson. Yeah. Is he still with ISBA? He is. I don't know if he's available for hire. He's retired. He's retired. Um, yeah. I think I'd like he's to be retired. Still, like independently might offer some services. Right. Um, but he is retired now. Is he available for consultation or no? I check. It might be worth asking. I know his wife really well, so maybe he'll give us a good deal. Maybe he'll just agree to do it. Maybe. Just a thought. Yeah. I had, I had him for my first class and ongoing training really about 15 yeah. years ago. And I've received training from him a couple of different times, and, and um, he's very knowledgeable. I think uh, the key, as Mrs. Austin stated, is that people have to be open to being uh, trained and then believing the best of the fellow board members. And uh, that's an individual decision that we would all have to bring to the process. All right, so it sounds like, uh, I'm not taking a vote here obviously, but it sounds as though the uh, next steps are to see perhaps Mrs. Kronk will check with Mr. Adamson. I will check with the ISBA and also Church Church Hiddle to see what options we might have available to focus on the governance structure of a school board uh, in terms of training options, rather than the interpersonal variety of training. Anybody else, any comments or thoughts on that? Okay, we will move on to um, information to the board. 
I don't want to steal Mr. Schott's thumb thunder, but I do want to uh, take a moment to appreciate the work of the West Lafayette Schools Education Foundation. The Scarlet and Gray Banquet is a wonderful fundraiser for our community and our schools, and the work they do in our schools is phenomenal. So thank you to members Schott, Austin, and Marley, and myself, and our central office staff who very kindly joined us on that night to celebrate um, that. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, we will, excuse me, we will have additional information about the retiree celebration that's coming up uh, <clears throat> later in June. Um, I also will have information for all members about commencement. This is the first time that four of seven of us will have had commencement inside the gymnasium. We're delighted to have that come back. So we'll give you some instructions on how that works. Just as a reminder to all board members, our school, our students actually plan um, commencement and our uh, schools, we do not plan that and our administrators only guide them. Uh, and so um, <clears throat> it's a great day to enjoy the students' work. Um, <clears throat> we did also attend the ISBA regional meeting, the uh, region four meeting last week. Uh, and there were, um, we were awarded the um, exemplary board uh, award again, and that is uh, as of January 31st, so that was the previous board that made that up, but Mr. Marley, myself, um, re received uh, commendations based on points, as did uh, members Yin and Austin. So that was a lovely evening, a good night to hear about what happened in the most recent legislative session that affects schools. Um, <clears throat> I uh, also want to let everybody know that I have made the decision to discontinue the board chair notes. Uh, I have done that because we have three members who refuse to use them. They decline them and they prefer to continue with email. Um, and I have made the decision as board chair to invest time and energy in resolving the public records requests that we received for email. and. Uh, we have actually already received one of those. Today, we have received a public records request for myself and Dr. Greiner's emails. So we'll be working through that. That's already been submitted to legal. Um, it is unfortunate uh, that we cannot continue in a way more transparent to our community, um, but we can't run both mechanisms, unfortunately, or fortunately speaking. Transparency is the work of all of the board, not just some of the board. So uh, that is the end of my information to the board. Dr. Greiner, what do you have? celebrate the upcoming graduation, which is what we are all about. So graduation will be Friday, May 26th at 7 p.m. in the Bavarian at Gymnasium. And the good news is our gym floor is going to, is right on track for being completed with curing happening as we speak. It should be accessible uh, by Monday, May 15th. Uh, and so that gives us the time we need for the May 6th, 26th celebration. Give you just a few legislative updates. I didn't talk with you, Mrs. Austin, so if I steal your thunder, I apologize. <laughs> you can stay be quiet as I go if you choose to have me do that. So as you are aware, the Indiana legislative, legislative session has come to a close, and we I didn't receive the level of funding that we were hoping to receive. But we did at the last minute uh, have a much improved um, uh, uh, proposal, um, and that came really after all of the different organizations said, send your letter, send your concerns, and boy, we all came together, ISBA, um, Indiana Association of Public School Su Superintendents, um, IASBO, and um, I wrote uh, to our local legislators, I received uh, information back from them or responses back. I know several of you did that too, so I wanna thank anyone that did do that. I also went back and thanked um, uh, our representatives uh, for the responses back and they shared that they, they did communicate and they came back together and, and we saw we saw some movement. So again, is it where we would have hoped to see when you think about cost of living increases and so forth? No, but it's better than no movement at all. So that in itself um, is something uh, to recognize. And I will give you some information regarding funding, but I'm gonna go first to, uh, there were 223 bills, we heard that from ISBA. 19% of those bills were related to K through 12 school governance or children. Uh, and, and the number of related bills continues to rise each legislative session. So you can think about um, 
what that looks like and what that's doing then when it comes time to think about how that applies to schools and policy uh, and so forth. Uh, the number of, I said that, I'm sorry. Now for the funding, the final percentage for the budget bill leaves Indiana traditional public schools on average 4.7% increase in basic uh, tuition, uh, which is the foundation and complexity funding together. And that's support in fiscal year 2024, and then just a 0.5% in fiscal year 2025. The foundation funding per student increases 5.7 in 2024 and 1.4 in 2025. And that West Lafayette numbers are increasing um, right in line with that foundation funding of the right about 5.7, 2025, and one, uh, 2024, and 1.4 in 2025. This is certainly the year of voucher. So they saw a huge percentage increase of 72%, 72.6% from fiscal year 2023. Um, of the 48 new school related laws enacted, we will be working very closely with ISBA and NEOLA um, as these revisions begin to play out and then we'll respond accordingly. Just, I think that's all I have to say tonight. Yeah. Just as a note, we did receive the spring uh, policy update packet from Neola. Dr. Reiner and I have had some conversations uh, along with um, Secretary Austin, and I anticipate that we'll bring in the June meeting a uh, conversation about continuing with Neola or considering another option uh, for review of policy. So that conversation is just kind of beginning to happen, but we'll see. Uh, where we end up with, but we should see that on the June agenda. I do want to make one more comment, and that is I will be attending much of IASBO annual meeting right alongside Michelle and the team so that we can learn together to be the best uh, at what we do um, for the business of the schools. And we certainly look forward to continued updates and understanding of the legislative um, results, um, how that'll play out, because as we heard even recently at the ISBA uh, meeting, they were just now deciphering it and trying to understand what that means, and that'll be a long process. So we know that we're going to learn a lot more even uh, this week, yet this week. So we'll continue to follow that and keep the board abreast. Okay, so we're going to move on to board and superintendent reports. I have shared with you what I have. Uh, let's start with community. Sure, for foundation, um, the highly anticipated month of April uh, has concluded very successfully. Uh, Wall of Pride was a tremendous uh, two days, April 13th and 14th. Uh, the plaques of the uh, honorees are hanging uh, just outside uh, Bavarian Gymnasium in the Commons area, if you want to check that out. Uh, as President Witt noted, Scarlet and Gray was a success. A uh, few numbers, a uh, record number of attendees, 191, including good representation from the central office uh, and the board. And while the numbers aren't quite final, it looks like a lot of a new fundraising record for that event as well. Our next meeting is Thursday, so we should get more details on that at that time. Prior to commencement will be the uh, scholarship award um, banquet uh, that WLSF, WLSEF hosts. 23 students have been notified that they I received a combined 30, 33 scholarships for a total of $36,000. So that's always a great event. And lastly, uh, the class of 1958 is in town this week for their 65th class reunion. Uh, Wendy Ayler will be hosting 17 members of that class. Uh, actually, she's doing that uh, this evening. So that's my report. Wonderful, thank you. I'll move on to curriculum, Dr. Yin. So the main main issue that relates throughout school district is the after school program which we have covered earlier and the other activities related to our school in on april 17th and uh, under the supervision of our environmental science teacher and the Hipster and uh, our student uh, volunteers in from high school removed some unwanted species near uh, near the kingston entrance in Happy Hollow Park. And our district become the first school system in Indiana designated for tree compass K-12 by the Arbor Day Foundation. Another uh, act, uh, event in the park 
is uh, on April 28th in the more than 200 volunteers um, and pick up trashes near the Wabash River. And uh, so there are so many and very overwhelming. And uh, this activity and basically the volunteer work for the whole morning and uh, picked up a whole dumpster of trashes near the Wabash River. Those trashes will were likely go into the river if they are not picked. And this activity is held every twice a year, one in April, uh, one in spring, one in fall. So everybody is welcome to join it uh, in the future. Um, the yeah, the farmers market is open, and from this this week. And um, Dr. Yan, I believe there was a glass meeting as well during this time period. Were you able to report on that tonight? So, glass, the yeah, special no. education. Did you? What did you have a report on that? I didn't go to the last. Didn't event. go to. Was the last there a meeting? Uh, yes, there is a was a meeting. Did you? Did they have a quorum, Dr. Greiner? We we did. It was on. I'm sorry. That's okay. Real quick. I didn't. Uh, Mrs. Julian, would you please send the glass schedule to Dr. Yin again so she can mark her calendar? If at any point you're not able to attend a meeting, yeah, did, please guess, let, let us know. Uh, um, officers are always happy. I'll remind all board members, officers are always happy to try and pick up meetings if you're unable to attend. I know Mrs. Austin has a degree in special education and she will happily pick yeah. that up if it doesn't fit your schedule. Was that, what was the date on that? I'm going to, um, April 25th. April 25th, but you did have a quorum and were able to conduct business? We did. Okay. Did Sorry, you have anything to share from that? That stands out to you? I have to go back and look at my agenda. That's okay. I didn't give you, didn't give you a heads up on that one. My apologies. Okay. Yeah. We're always happy to cover that. And Mrs. Julian will provide you with a, a copy of that schedule again, uh, Dr. Yen. Okay. Uh, moving on to um, finance external and Mr. Marley was unable to attend the last RDC meeting and uh, there's another one scheduled for Wednesday of next week so I'll be there give you a full report one thing we did in this uh, wall of pride was on 413 uh, the celebration occurred at West Lafayette Country Club uh, we honored Sonia Angel uh, Mayor John Dennis Dave Kelso Gary Lehman uh, Chris Ho and Joseph Krause really well attended great uh, celebration and Really uh, cool to see what these people have done since they left West Lafayette. It the is. Corporation, so. I was unavailable for the reception that night, but went to the attendance at the uh, uh, student convocation the next day, and our students were thrilled to hear from those um, honored, and they were thrilled that um, Dr. Greiner dismissed them a tad bit early <laughs> that day. Uh, that was met with much joy among students, so. Um, okay, uh, moving on to finance internal, uh, Mr. Wong. Yeah, I don't, I don't have too much things to report on these financial things, uh, but the only things I want to mention is I uh, joined the SBA, uh, the conference, local regional conference. Mm -hmm. I think that's quite a learning experience for me. It uh, goes through a lot of legal things, and um, it's quite good and very informative. Thank you. The food they do is a nice really job. Good. Glad you liked it. They do a nice job, don't they? Yeah, it's very, very nice. But the food is not uh, as good as what I invited. <laughs> but the training is good. They're very informative. Yeah. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. All right, moving on to internal systems and Mrs. Mumford. And the Public Schools Foundation on May 3rd honored their grant recipients for the spring cycle. And our very own Laura Falk was honored at that. And that's the only update that I have. That was a math related grant, wasn't it? It was for the whole school district. Wonderful, wonderful. All right, moving on to legislative and policy and Mrs. Austin. Everybody steals my stuff. I'm so sorry. <laughs> but I also, um, I did want to report that the previously disputed minutes have been updated and are published correctly on the website. Um, and I wanted to thank the uh, West Lafayette Foundation for a great evening at the Scarlet and Gray. I had a really good time. Um, I know those events take a ton of work and volunteers, and I appreciate everyone, including my husband who carried boxes <laughs> afterward. <laughs> um, and most of us did attend the ISBA update on the legislative session. Um, I recommend we all read the 
pamphlet that came from that because there was a lot of good information. Um, and I did attend board teacher discussion and the next one is May 18th. I agree. Absolutely. All right. Uh, moving on to communication from the audience. And we have one person signed up. Uh, Hare Stu. Good evening. I'll do my best to keep it short. I wanted to start off, first of all, by letting you know that this is Teacher Appreciation Week, and we also appreciate our board. So that's part of the reason why I wanted to come tonight and talk to you. Um, you saw robotics. They were on my list. Uh, I wanted to also point out, and I know normally you guys do a very good job of presenting all the wonderful things that our students are doing, but I wanted to bring up a couple of things. Uh, in particular, we've done very well in sports, both boys, boys golf, track and field, softball have all been very good this spring. If you haven't been to one of those, you need to catch them quickly. Uh, the prom, I loved going to prom. It was awesome to see Catherine Dunford win uh, as queen and Wyatt Curl as king. This past week at Purdue, uh, and this is an association I was involved in for many years, Academic Super Bowl. I uh, was very successful at my last school as a coach, but when I came here, the coaches were already there. <laughs> and they were all good and they're all, and they're all still good because we placed fifth in uh, fine arts uh, th in the state third in science, second in social studies, second in English, and second in interdisciplinary. So that's five out of the six teams that went on to state, which is really awesome. I saw Dr. Greiner and I think some of the rest of you, I know Mrs. Mumford was at the concerts on Saturday, I'm sorry, on Sunday, uh, where a lot of awards were won by people who are very successful and very dedicated to music in our, in our school corporation. And I know that Mrs. Brooks uh, will be missed by thousands of students uh, that's one of our retirees is coming up. Tomorrow morning, the World, World Language Department will be uh, giving away awards. Uh, first of all, we'll start off with our quiz bowl teams who did very, very well. Uh, in addition to the two German teams winning first, we also had very uh, good winners. I don't remember all the French and Spanish, I'm sorry. My, my colleagues. We will also be honoring the, those students who scored in the 90th percentile in the national uh, exams. Now, keep in mind the the 90th percentile means you're scoring better than 90% of all the people who took the test nationwide. And in some of those levels, we have as much as 75% of our class scoring at that level. So that's an unbelievable number. In addition, we will honor individual class best, so to speak. So the, the best of the first year level, second, third, and fourth. So a friend of mine from, uh, from Bedford North Lawrence always likes to say the kids are all right. And I think we saw that this evening when our students were talking. The one student, the, the young, uh, young man, is one of my students and is one of those kids who actually, before he took his, his AP test today, emailed me to say, I'm going to be taking my test. I forgot to tell you, what am I missing, blah, 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 and came in afterwards and got his work. That's one of about eight, but still, nevertheless. I just want to encourage you as a board to keep three things in your mind. When you're, whatever you're doing, whether you're here at a meeting, whether you're talking with the community, et cetera, you have three basic things you need to do and that for to help their staff, to help your students, and to help the community. Number one, constantly focus on the kids. If you can't find a way that what you're doing is actually relating back to the students, then maybe it's not that important. The second, uh, and this kind of goes back to what Dr. Grinder was saying a moment ago, it's your job to help keep the state government wolves off our back because let's be honest they they are in favor of public schools the people who are in charge and that includes the three things i can think of you mentioned money which is not adequate what they have decided to give us in the next two years the book bans that are putting our public librarians and our school librarians in potential danger i don't know if you've seen what's happening in hamilton county but whole teen libraries have been emptied out and there are gonna be thousands of hours of work done just to figure out whether or not they meet some standard that no one can even define, and pronouns and trans students. And I have a lot of students who are looking forward and looking, not in a good way, looking down the road to December that the medicine that they are taking right now that makes them happy and stable and able to function will not be allowed. And we have families in this community that are planning to move out of state. So I don't know if you're aware of that, but that's a problem. That comes back to money as well, because if we don't have students, we don't have the money. And the last thing, and this is the most important, and I know that th I believe this is going to be on your work agenda in, here in May. This community has been very generous in supporting a referendum. This community needs to continue to be that same level of generosity through the next round, because if we do not pass a referendum, and I don't want me to be a, dooms a doomsayer, but Mrs. Mumford will not be videotaping any orchestra. 
from the elementary. We will not, there will be a ton of things we'll have to cut. And we have got to be serious about that. So this community, if they do nothing else from this meeting tonight, I hope they take that away, that we must look down the road and say, what do we need to fund the programs we want our students to have access to? And if that's not in your repertoire, then that's not the school you're going to have anymore. So if you like what we have and you want to expand, you're going to have to do that. If you don't like what we have, I'm surprised. Uh, but seriously, if you if you don't if your focus is not on those three things, that really isn't necessary. We really need to keep that focus. And I appreciate it when you guys are on track. And I appreciate being able to talk to each of you. And uh, thank you very much for your evening. Thank you, Mr. Stu. Um, okay, so we will move on to. Uh, future meetings. As um, mentioned, we do have executive session um, to discuss specifically the referendum. Uh, we're going to start that at 6 p.m. in the administration office. That'll be from 6 to 7 on Monday, May the 22nd. And then we will transition to a work session in this room uh, on Monday, May the 22nd at 7 p.m. So it'll be a short break in between and we will walk over uh, and engage. We will have um, uh, Mr. DeBoer and Mr. Reuter and uh, Mrs. Mrs. Herndon, who will all be present to provide us with information and counsel. At that meeting, our next regular board meeting is Monday, June the 12th um, <clears throat> at 6.30 here. Uh, the retiree's reception is immediately prior to that from 5.30 to 6.15. Um, upcoming dates of interest you can see on the agenda. Uh, as a reminder, board documents posted on the WLCSC website as early as Friday, and most of them are up already. Uh, and actually, they're all up, aren't they? They're all up on Friday. And yes. thank you to your team for getting those up. Just as a reminder, we can't always guarantee that will happen on Friday afternoon. It depends on the packet and the time and the needs. So uh, I believe your commitment was no later than Monday. Monday at noon. Monday at noon was the end of that commitment window. Um, and then finally, video and audio of this meeting will be posted on the WLCSC website within seven to 10 days following this meeting. Could I get a motion to adjourn, please? Moved by Mr. Marley, second by Mr. Wong. Questions or concerns with regard to adjournment? Hearing none, all those in favor of adjourning our meeting, please indicate with a show of hands. That motion carries seven to zero, Mrs. Julian, we are adjourned. Thank you all very much. We do have paperwork to sign and we've got cards up here as well. <laughs>